essentially when I did the interviews, I only have like, like six months of experience welding. I worked at a weld shop and fab shop of sorts. Then I went to a lineman school. So I had four months of lineman school experience. And then that was it. And I was only 19, 20 years old. I just didn't have the experience. And that's one thing that they looked for big time was, do you have the experience? Looking for someone who has the experience and you being young, do not waste your time or the money to go to lineman school. Welcome back to episode three of CTQ. CTQ stands for Cruise the Questions. This is a segment where I take your guys' questions that you guys ask me, whether that's on Instagram, DMs, email, in the YouTube comment sections, TikTok, however you guys prefer to send your messages. I take those questions and I answer them here. So the reason for this is because if you guys have a question, there's a good chance, good likelihood that someone else has the exact same question and they didn't even know it. So send me your questions, anything blue collar related that you guys have questions about. Maybe you don't have an uncle or a dad or a brother or somebody you know that works in a blue collar industry you want to get into. Ask the questions to me because I know a lot of people in a lot of different trades and I'll get you the answers. On episode three of CTQ, Let's hop into question number one. This is from a guy named Thomas. He says, hey, I love the lineman content you posted and truly has helped me on figuring out that being in alignment is what I want to do. I'm graduating high school this May and I wanna ask your advice. I have two options lined up and I'm having a hard time truly deciding which one will help me out the most and get me into the ones quickest. I can either go to Lyman College in my state, but it's a two year program or I have a job lined up to climb cell towers and they are going to have me traveling four days a week working four tens. I think that taking the tower climbing job would help me more by giving me experience and showing me the union I am dependable and willing to learn and I liked the traveling lifestyle but was just wondering your opinion. Sorry for the long message and thank you for your time. Thomas, great question. So here's my advice for you. Don't go to the two years of Lyman school. That is going to be two years wasted where you could be getting experience climbing towers. Now, this is great related work experience. I'll tell you from my interview experiences for a couple different lineman apprenticeships, the biggest misconception, biggest common problem that I found is that the interviewers were looking for guys that had a little bit more experience than I had. Essentially, when I did the interviews, I only had like a couple, like six months of experience welding. I worked at a weld shop and fab shop of sorts. And then I went to a lineman school, so I had four months of lineman school experience, and then that was it. And I was only 19, 20 years old. I just didn't have the experience. And that's one thing that they looked for big time was, do you have the experience? Looking for someone who has the experience. And you being young, do not waste your time or the money to go to lineman school. I say, climb the cell towers, get that experience. The cool part about it is four tens. I mean, that's 40 hours a week. The experience of climbing towers is, is like I said, it's related work experience. So the climbing those towers is gonna be climbing like a lattice transmission tower. So climbing, being in heights, working on the road, you know, four tens isn't long hours, big hours, but it does show that you are willing to work and willing to travel and willing to work at heights and do those sorts of things, which all those skills you're going to learn and those experiences are very well transferable into the lineman trade. Now, if I'm on the interview board and you come in and you say, hey, you know, I'm so-and-so and I have a year and a half experience. I've been working on cell towers. We've been climbing cell towers around the state. I travel, we work on the road four days a week and X, Y, Z, and you go on to tell me about your experience. I'm gonna look at you and be like, man, he has probably what it takes in the lineman trade because the lineman trade is not easy and traveling is a big part of it if you get into the outside construction apprenticeship. If you get on with the utility, not so much traveling is involved, but if you wanna get on with the outside contractors, there's most likely traveling involved and that's part of it. Now, if I have someone come in and I'm on the interview board 
and they happen to be the same age as you, but the only experience they have is to your lineman school, I'm taking you. I'm taking your experience, your knowledge, what hopefully you've learned. And I'd rather have an applicant like you inside the lineman trade because you just shows me that instead of just spending the money to go learn and get educated, you are willing to take the steps to go out and actually work and actually learn and actually get the experience. And that to me is worth a lot more than whatever the price tag is on a two-year lineman school. Now, what you learn in lineman school could be kind of cool. And hopefully, you know, inside that school, they get you your class CDL and all the, the tools and sorts you need for the trade and everything else they teach you inside the lineman school, though, you're going to learn inside the lineman apprenticeship. And once you get to the lineman apprenticeship, it's the first of a apprentice or a pre-apprentice, I'm going to expect you to know nothing anyways. So the lineman school, the stuff you learn inside of lineman school, it just Sure, it might help here or there on certain things, but to any other lineman, if you come in as a first step, we're going to think you know nothing anyway, so you might as well just leave it at that. I'm sorry for those of you who had went to a two-year lineman school and spent the money. I went to a four-month one, and I felt like it was a waste of my time and, frankly, kind of a waste of my money anyway. Looking back on it, I wish I, I would have done it differently because I knew there was, I didn't know, but I know now is there's different routes I could have taken. I could have done what the, he's talking about, or I could have done power line tree trim clearance, which I did anyway, or I could have worked on the civil side doing underground conduit work or anything related to work experience with Lyman trade and got the experience for a year, year and a half, two years, and then applied and then got into the Lyman trade into the alignment apprenticeship. If I would redo it, that's probably what I would do. But I can't change the past, can't change the history. I'm just here to teach you guys what I could have done or what I should have done. So maybe you can learn from, I wouldn't say it's a mistake, but learn from what I did and take that education and do as you please. But you, sir, that was a great question, Thomas. I say skip the lineman school, don't spend the money, don't waste the two years, it might not be a waste, but don't go there, get the experience, go make that money, uh, hopefully you get educated, maybe they have some sort of apprenticeship program you get into, whatever it is, get that real world on the job experience that's worth more than going to lineman school, hopefully you get your class CDL and any other certification that they could give you, within that job, within that company, because any certification, anything you can get while working is only gonna to work to your benefit. It just shows that you really want it. And that's worth more than a $30,000 alignment school. All right, let's hop into question number two. And this one is such a common question that I probably have like 60 of these questions that are along this, these same lines. Now this question is from Brant. Brand says, graduating line school in two weeks. Any advice? Funny how I just got done talking, ranting about Lyman schools and how they can be a waste of time and money, which technically I'm 50-50 on it. I'm not trying to go down the rabbit hole of Lyman schools again. It's a great way to get experience and see if that's something that you want to pursue. But uh, you could do that other ways. Anyway, Brand, you're graduating in two weeks and you want me to give you any tips, tricks, any advice for you, be willing to buckle up, travel, do whatever it takes. I don't know how old you are. I don't know where you're from. I don't know where you live. I don't know what you're willing to do. I don't know if you have your class C CDL. I don't know if you have your certifications. I don't know what you have. I don't know what you know. Anyways, that's what I'm gonna tell you. If you wanna go union, which I highly recommend a good union, get into a lineman union apprenticeship and IBW because that is gonna be your best training best training, great apprenticeship, you get paid the most, you have great pensions, great benefits, because it's a union, things like that. Anyway, get to union apprenticeship requires, could require you to travel. And it's extremely competitive because you're not the only one that wants to get into the lineman trade. Imagine that. There is thousands of other individuals just like you who just graduated lineman school, who are just graduating lineman school, or who have been working in the trades for a number of years and they want to become alignment as well. So be prepared for the competitiveness. 
take every action possible in your benefit to become the best applicant. So being brushed up on your math skills, everything that they taught you inside the lineman school, I'm assuming they taught you probably electrical theory, transform hookups, or uh, the kind of math you could expect to see in the lineman trade. Be prepared just to use that math and actually use what you learned inside that school when it comes to applications and interviews and taking aptitude tests, whether those aptitude tests are a written skills test or a written math test or a written comprehension test. And then you also, there's a possibility of having skills tests, which includes climbing, includes digging holes, carrying pull chunks and, and logs around. Be prepared for everything you could expect along the way to get into the apprenticeship. Once you get in to an apprenticeship or you become a groundman or an apprentice, it's not gonna be easy for you because first off, you went to lineman school, so everyone's gonna think that you work with that, you know, you know what you're doing, when in reality, you actually don't. So be prepared to have a lot of crap talk to you. You're gonna be talked down to, you're gonna be belittled. It's not gonna be easy. That's just the way of the trade. You know, we don't want soft individuals in the trade because we need somebody it's pretty hardcore so we know we can rely on that person to weather through the storm, work the long hours, do the physical work that it takes, have a good attitude, do those kinds of things. Now, I'm gonna say apply for every apprenticeship that opens up. Be willing to travel. It depends on how bad you want it. You're gonna have to really, really, really want it. And when I say really want it, because there's a thousands of others who want it just as bad as you are, if not worse, or better, you're gonna to have to apply for every single lineman apprenticeship that you see, whether that's a utility, whether that's a co-op, whether that is outside lineman construction in the Northwest, Swolcat, CalNav, Mountain States, Albat, uh, Cellcat, every single apprenticeship you better be applying for. Also, driving around the country if you want to and go sign every out of work books that you can. Just remember that as soon as you get a call as a groundman, you better take your name off all the other out of work books so you're not called what we call double booking, which is working for a contractor or through the union, but still have your names on the out of work books elsewhere. That's highly disfrowned upon. That'll get your ticket yanked and have you blackballed from properties and never work in the union, IBW, lineman trade ever again. Anyways, be willing to travel. Be willing to beat your competition, learn as much as you can when it comes to math, figure out, do research on what every single apprenticeship you apply for, what the aptitude test looks like, whether that's a skills test or a written test comprehension test, figure these things out. You got to call the union halls. You got to ask them questions, what it takes, when the applications are open, does it cost money, what you need, the, the requirements, everything, make everything list it out, write them all down, get it figured out every single day. You gotta be checking, you know, applications. Maybe there's an application or apprenticeship opening near you for the utility. Whatever, you have to take every single possibility, every single chance you can get to get your foot in the door to start getting experience. That might include doing civil work, laying conduit. That might be doing power line tree trimming or just tree clearance. That might be doing working construction, a blue collar job anywhere, just to get hands-on experience, to know that you're able to work with the crew, work around other guys, work long hours, be able to do the physical work involved inside the lineman trade. You have to be the best candidate when it comes to doing an interview. And when they look at your application, they look at your test scores, and they look at your interview, they can say, hey, Brant, you're a good application. You're a good applicant for the lineman trade. We're gonna offer you this opportunity and they're gonna rank you number 10 on the list so you could expect to call within probably a week or maybe a month. So Brent, do everything in your control to learn, apply, travel, have all your ducks in a row, be dedicated to wanting to get into it because there's thousands of others out there that wanna get into it too, and they're all your competition. So. Let that be known, it's not gonna be easy, extremely competitive, and once you get in, it's not gonna be easy, it's still gonna be competitive. You're still gonna have to have your ducks in a row, have your mind, have your head on the right swivel, 
because once the apprenticeship begins, that's a whole new page, a whole new chapter in the book. And that's frankly the first step to becoming alignment. So that's my advice, tip, trick, whatever you want for, to you. For you graduating alignment school in two weeks, that's what I would suggest for you to do. Those are two questions, episode three of CTQ. Any of you who want to submit questions, alignment related, any blue collar industry trade related, email them to austin at bluecolleredu.com or DM me on Instagram or TikTok or comment down below any questions that you have in this YouTube video. And then that way, I'll look through them. I write them all down. I have hundreds of questions right now in my notes. So I try to get to them. And with this segment, hopefully I can get to a lot of them. So if you want your question answered right here on a YouTube video for you to learn and for others to learn from your question, email me your questions or just ask them anywhere on my social media platform. That being said, Blue Collar EDU, I'm here to expose, teach, educate you about blue collar career opportunities and things that'll help you getting started in the skill trade. You want to learn more, go to bluecolleredu.com. Links in the description down below. Want to become a lineman, if you want to become an iron worker, a welder, electrician, whatever the case may be. There's lots of free learning on the website, free courses, take the trade quiz to figure out what trade might be for you. And with that being said, I'll catch you on the next one.